You say almond or almond? How do people, al I say almond. Oh hey, my name is Nadia and welcome back to my YouTube channel. This week we are making witch fingers. So these are some creepy cookies that my mom used to make for my school Halloween parties and I would bring them to class and let me tell you, these cookies separate the brave souls from the not so brave souls. Some people get super creeped out by them but at the end of the day that's kind of the point. So on that note, let's get cooking. Step one in making these creepy cookies is to beat the butter. I'm doing this in our KitchenAid stand mixer fitted with the paddle attachment and we're going to mix until the butter is nice and creamy. You'll also notice that the butter is at room temperature so it beats really nicely once it goes into the mixer. So if I know that I'm making something, usually what I do is the night before I take out the butter and let it sit on the counter overnight so it can come to room temperature. And if I don't remember, my mom usually does so she will do that for me. But if you don't have my mom to remind you of your butter, you can very simply just throw it in the microwave, lower the power level to 5 or 50% and then just warm it up in increments of like 10 to 15 seconds until it has that nice soft texture. Before I add the next ingredient, I'm going to scrape the bowl down all the way to the bottom and then while the mixer is on a low speed, I'm going to add the icing sugar a spoonful at a time. I'm going to scrape the bowl again and then add the eggs one at a time. Scrape the bowl one more time and then you should add the almond extract at this point but I totally forgot so I just mixed it in by hand. It doesn't really matter when you put it in as long as it gets in there. And then by hand you can add half the flour. Now I'm going to suggest you add a little bit at a time because you might not need all of it or you might need more but it's always easier to add than to take away like I always say. So start with half and work your way up. Then you're gonna add the baking powder, salt, and almond flour. Once you've added those ingredients, you can go ahead and continue adding your flour until you get a dough-like consistency. We're gonna be shaping this dough, so you want it to be able to hold its shape and stick together. Obviously, you don't want it to be too dry because then the fingers are just gonna fall apart. Although now that I'm saying that, that might actually make the fingers look cooler because they might come out all wrinkly, but it's just gonna be harder to work with, so disregard all of that. <laughs> Now we can get to the fun part, which is shaping the witch fingers so that they actually look like fingers. I wanted them all to be a similar size, so I used a mini ice cream scoop to portion the dough into kind of golf ball sizes. You can eyeball this part, of course, but this is just something that I like to do. You can also see that I covered my dough with some saran wrap so it wouldn't dry out. If you're planning on mixing the dough and shaping it right away, then you don't have to worry about covering it. But like me, I cleaned my kitchen in between mixing the dough and shaping, so I just covered it so it wouldn't dry out. Now that everything is portioned, we can actually get to shaping them, which let me tell you, is harder than I thought it was gonna be. After a few tries and some advice from basically my entire family, I was finally able to figure out how to shape these fingers, <laughs> kind of. Nice Maybe it looks like a finger. Give it a little bit of pressure to make it nice and smooth. It's cracking. It's a weird looking thing. <laughs> Hold on, I'm focusing. Why is this so difficult? Oh, Nadia, if you keep breaking them, they're gonna get. You have to put them I know. In the fridge. I know. It might crack. I don't know what you did. Clearly nothing, right? Which? 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 No. What? What? Which? You're pressing too hard on the end. Yeah. Well, jeez, I better fix these. Press in the middle more. Paul, you wanna try? You think it's easy? <laughs> no, She's no, having no. a hard time. <laughs> I'm not oh gonna have my a good gosh, time at all. Nadia. Mama's the wizard, okay? Mama's the witch, never mind. <laughs> yeah, don't spread your fingers. So, just like a little bit? Look, spread? I don't know. Oh my god, your fingers are like all the way apart. Well, I don't know, my fingers are different, I guess. They're witch fingers. Yeah. <laughs> I think the pinky's just... not even touching it. Is that the problem? Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> they look like rolling pins. Okay, wait, here we go. Well, here we I go. can't. Here can we go. Put these I on. feel it, I feel it, I feel it. Yeah, that one's a little better for sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not as. No, it broke! Oh, you got it. I like to eat that. Oh, yeah, look at that one, Max. It's an old witch. I think I'm getting better. The tactic is the pinky. But <laughs> oh, oh, Mom! <laughs> That's three knuckles. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't know it's how very long. Think about it. I quit! <laughs> I quit! <laughs> what? It's just, I don't know. It doesn't look bad. Fine, you can help me then. <laughs> 
You want to work the dough between your fingers, apply light pressure, and keep your fingers slightly separated. I also found that the pinky helped. How you ask? I have no idea. It just, it, it was like a little support and it worked. <laughs> The beauty of all of this is that the fingers aren't supposed to be perfect and in my opinion the uglier the better so there you go. If it does take you a few tries to get the hang of it like it did for me, you can take the dough that you already worked with and throw it in the fridge for a few minutes just so it hardens a little. This dough is very butter based and what happens when you play with butter? It warms up and melts and then it just doesn't keep its shape and it's just going to become more frustrating. So throwing it in the fridge will definitely help that. Now for the part that I think ties these cookies together. The almond fingernails. You spooky. <laughs> We're gonna be using whole almonds that I've peeled, but of course, if you wanted to, you could keep the skin on or even use sliced almonds if that's easier for you. I think the peeled almonds look better because they kind of have this like weird texture to them, but whatever you want, they're your cookies. I'll let you do what you want. To peel the almonds, you're just gonna have to soak them in some boiling water for a few minutes strain them and then you just have to pinch the almond and the skin will come right off the almond will literally fly out of it then you just have to transfer them to a tray lined with paper towel and pat them dry if you wanted to you could prepare the almonds the day before i did it 30 minutes before i actually used them and they turned out just fine once they're fully dried you're going to press an almond onto the tip of the finger now don't press too hard because you don't want the dough to be too thin under the almond but just press enough so that it's nicely nestled in there like a nail bed then you're just going to use a knife to draw some lines on the knuckles and then pop them in the oven at 325 for about 15 minutes. The dough doesn't change color, it's going to stay the exact same so these fingers are going to stay white, they're not going to become like a golden brown. So just keep an eye on them so that you know they're done. Once they're cooled, you're going to remove the almonds but keep them close to their matching finger because we're actually going to be putting them back after we add some red gel. I'm using the Wilton red gel which I'll link down below but essentially you just draw a U shape with the gel in the nail bed. I aimed right for the, like if this is the top of the cookie and this is where the nail bed happens, I kind of aimed for like right here, I don't, I don't know what to call it, like the drop off, the cliff, like you know what I'm talking about, like right here. Again, the uglier the better, so it doesn't really matter where you aim, but for reference that's where I aimed with the gel. <laughs> And then you're just going to press the almond back into place and there you have it, some super creepy looking witch fingers. You can see where I pressed a little bit too hard with the almond, the dough was a little too thin so it burnt, but the uglier the better, so there you go. I'm going to eat my favorite finger, I don't know why it's my favorite finger, I think I made this one, I just think it looks kind of creepy. Well, this is like my mom's signature Halloween cookie, so it just tastes like fall and Halloween and it reminds me of like childhood, so it's the best. These taste similar to sugar cookies, but obviously they're a little more almondy because we added the almond extract and the almond flour, but nonetheless, they are delicious. I love them. If you or someone you know is allergic to nuts and you do want to make these, I would recommend using a sugar cookie because you can still shape it, and then instead of using an almond for the nail, you could use a raisin, so that way you can still have fun with the whole witch finger, but just keep it nut-free. On that note, I would also recommend using a sugar cookie recipe if you wanted to color the fingers. My mom has tried to color them before, for whatever reason this dough just doesn't hold the color. You would have to add like a full bottle of food coloring just to begin to see a little bit of a color. I have seen people make green witch fingers and they look really cool and like spooky in the best way. Um, so just in case you wanted to do that, that's your note. Also, the best part about these cookies is they're best if you make them ahead of time so that the gel has time to kind of settle. So you can see these were just sitting on the counter overnight at room temperature and like the nail is not moving, which means that they transport well. So if you wanted to bring them to a party, you don't have to worry about making a mess in your car or in the container that you're bringing them in. They hold. They also hold in the freezer. So my mom made these last Halloween. They were just sitting in a plain old container in the freezer for a year and they look the exact same. They don't smell freezer burnt at all. And to taste, they taste the exact same. Wow, they did the exact same. That's kind of scary. A little spooky, if I do say so myself. <laughs> I wasn't expecting them to taste that good. <laughs> okay, last point. Witch fingers are also one of my favorite Halloween desserts because they really show you who's brave enough to try them and who's not. And let me tell you, you would be surprised. So when I was in kindergarten, I brought these to school for Halloween for our party. And a few of the kids I remember were a little scared. They didn't want to try them. I was like, this is a cookie. It tastes good. I'm going to eat it. And like, it makes sense because they're four, so they're kids. But recently I learned that my dad and Paul 
two grown men are too chicken to eat these cookies. Paul will eat a few and then he says he kind of gets grossed out by the blood. It just, he can't do it. And my dad, I offered him some. I was like, hey, I made cookies. You want to try some? Like, they're really good. You know, mom's been making them forever. No, 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 no. I can't. I was like, okay, no problem. I was like, baby, later you should. Like, they're really good. My mom was like, he doesn't like them. He gets creeped out by them. And I was like, what? She's been making this for like 30 years. And here he is being like, I, it's too creepy. It's literally butter and flour. Like, <laughs> I just think it's hilarious. <laughs> All right, that's all from me, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do make these witch fingers, please like just take a picture or video of your friends and family trying them because I promise you it's gonna be worth it. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys next Friday. Bye. It's getting hot in here. Flour, and just keep mixing. Okay, keep adding. I feel like I have anyway. Saran wrap. Then covering it will just help prevent it from drying out. I think that's what I wanted to say, but I'm gonna say it again because I don't know if I said it right, so. In post-production, I'm really only talking for like 10 minutes, but in reality, this takes me like 30 minutes to get out because sometimes I just lose my train of thought. Like right now, I taste soap. And I don't know, my lip one? It's a little funny. Now that everything is portioned, I would say these taste Oh my god, I was so Okay. <laughs> that scared the crap out of me. I have, you know those like things that stick to windows, like the little jelly things? So I bought a Frankenstein, a Dracula, and a skeleton. And I saw the Frankenstein one in the corner of my eye. And it looked like it was on my neighbor's roof. Like it looked like a person. I have, I'm terrified. <laughs> We also have a scarecrow in the backyard that like when you look just directly out the window It looks like it's looking at you and it, it's gotten me a few times. It's <laughs> I'm scared. Nobody's home either. It's, so, it's just not good. <clears throat> I have a tickle. Lower the Is it Power level? Okay, yeah. Okay. And then by hand, I'm just gonna There's like a tornado going on? What is? I'm watching the news at the same time as filming this I feel very small in this kitchen all of a sudden. Also, I'm wearing my pajamas because you guys can't see my pants. So, here we are. <laughs> this week, we're going to be making my kettle just beat. Why did you beat? So, my mom, I couldn't find the witch fingers that we thought we had in the freezer, so now my mom had to go look for them. And I swear to God, I dug through that freezer. There were peppers from like three years ago in there, and I didn't see any. So, now I feel like she's gonna go down there and she's gonna be like, oh, there they are, because that's just what moms do. So we're gonna, I'm waiting, we're gonna see. I'm kinda scared. <laughs> That's, <they're, laughs> this is scarier than the fingers. Oh, she's coming. Did you find them? As soon as I, Nadia, they weren't buried anywhere. As soon as I opened the freezer, I checked I saw every it, shelf. And I called Baba before I touched anything. I said, Baba, come and see. He said, did, did she, did you look with her? She said, no, she's caught her like that was not. I just opened the freezer right I there. swear, I looked through every shelf. I dug through all the peppers. You know how many peppers we have? We have a lot of peppers. I went through the door. I opened the containers. There were even two Edocrem containers in the back that I was like, oh, maybe she put them in there. That's, also, why do we have Edocrem in the freezer? Well. Should we make kaffa before I start talking? So that yeah, I guess so. Yo, I saw some I come here last Thursday.